Hello, my name is Igor and I'm a member of Technical Support Department here in Comop. In today's video, we will be talking about Modbus Master functionality. As you know, IntelliJ 1000 has three Ethernet ports. One of these Ethernet ports is used as a Modbus Master. So if you go to the set points and for the Ethernet port number three, you will find the settings for Ethernet port number three, which is used as a Modbus master. In today's video, we will be using the manual settings, but if you connect it to the DHCP modem, you can set the automatic IP address gain, or you can of course disable this Ethernet port completely. IntelliJ 1000 doesn't only have the Modbus master on the TCP, but also on the RTU, so on the inbuilt RS-485 port. As you know, Modbus masters, or Modbus in general, is used in various industrial applications for communications with different systems. For example, it might be building management system, inverters, uh, some kind of sensors, and so on. So in our today, today's example, we will be using some sensors for the fuel level in the tanks. Modbus Master is set up in the controller configuration and it is added here in the ECU modules. In order to edit, go to add new module and then go for the Modbus and select the Modbus user device. So as you can see here, I already have this one set up. So I am reading from the device with address number one. It is the connection over the TCP from the IP address from this one. TCP port is 502, which is the standard one used for Modbus. And then depending on your system, you can set up the byte order. You can set up the pause before the requests and response timeout. Of course, there are some different, different settings such as a retry count and of course you will set up the needed number of the registers that you would like to read or write into. So here you can set up different number for the binary inputs, binary outputs, analog inputs and analog outputs. In our case, we will be reading from the fuel tank uh, measurement system so we will need only the analog inputs and I set the number to the minimal one so it is 8. After you adjust these settings uh, the only one left is to give the module a name and uh, protection upon module failure so in case there is a problem with the communication with this particular module unit or industrial system you will receive a shutdown alarm warning or none depending on your requests. Then you need to go to the Modbus registers and adjust or insert the Modbus registers that you would like to read or write into. So by clicking the plus button, you will be able to add a new Modbus register. You can give it a name. So let's say tank number X, because I already have tank number one, two, three, and four. Here you set the address, so the Modbus address, uh, which means the Modbus register. Uh, it might be holding register or something else. So for example, I will put number 40,000. Then you select the Modbus function, whether you would like to read the holding register or read coils and so on. And of course, there is an option for writing into the register since we are using the Modbus master uh, functionality. Then you need to select the data type, which is quite important because otherwise you will not be able to read some of these values. For the Boolean data type, you can also select the bit index in order to understand which bit to read in the byte. Since we are reading the integer value, uh, there is no bit index available for us, so uh, we need to select the dimension for it so it is shown correctly so let's say percentages in our case then you select the resolution which might be without decimals or with you then select the factor factor used to multiply the red value and of course it's offset 
The final thing, you will, you will set up the refresh rate for this exact volume. I'm not gonna save this one because I already have these registers filled in. So once you have all these registers inserted, you can save it to use then in your different projects. And then of course you can import data if you're using something that you have already created. The next thing would be to go for the IO configuration and set up the analog inputs or outputs for uh, reading or writing, depending on the situation. So in my case, if I go for the empty or spare analog input, first of all, I need to select the sensor electronic because we getting this value through the communications. And then in the ECU tab, we will, use, we will select the needed number of the tank in our case, or you will select the necessary value. So for example, if I select tank one, the name is already changed. And then I need to set up the bar graph for the uh, visualization. So let's say zero to 100%. So this is how you set up the Modbus over the TCP and the Modbus master over the RTU has pretty much the same settings. Uh, apart from the inserting the IP address, you only insert the device address and you select the connection type RTU. Otherwise, the settings are pretty much the same. And again, once you're using RTU, you will go for Modbus registers, fill in the Modbus registers that you would like to read or write into, and then you will go for the IO configuration and set it up accordingly. This configuration is already present in the controller. So once you would like to check what values are read, you will go for the value step. And of course, as you can see, there are no alarms in the alarm list. So all the devices are communicating properly. And here, if you go for the Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP, these two devices that I called them in the configuration, you will see that I'm reading different values from the Modbus. So this is how you set up the Modbus master functionality in the IntelliJ 1000 controllers. If you would like to know some additional information, please feel free to check the global guide where you can find much more details. Thank you for watching and see you on the next videos.